Hey Snappers, so we're daffing all in a triple shot of coffee. Um, I think I'm almost awake. It'd be great if I had like more of a fine-tuned balance and control over my biochemistry, but... Alright, so let's see if I can throw out some random thoughts on complexity theory, on chaos theory, on entropy, on self-organizing systems, and all sorts of cool stuff like that. We know the entropy of the universe is always increasing, meaning the second law of thermodynamics is kicking in uh, and kind of dissipating the heat, so it goes from a state of order to a state of disorder and decay. Which means we know that there's going to be a heat death of the universe where everything is so spread out that it's essentially cold and so nothing much can happen anymore, it just kind of like dies essentially and time always stops. It's kind of funny that we're the only species on this planet aware of its own mortality, but we're also aware that the universe has a mortality as well, and that's interesting. But so at the Big Bang, there was like, you know, everything was packed into a tiny little, like, you know, the size of a golf ball or whatever, um, and you had a massive singularity, which caused massive chaos and a sudden, like, and then that chaotic, kind of massive, uh, incredibly hot uh, universe, that initial universe, uh, complexity formed when things started cooling down, and that's where you get, you know, planets and galaxies and stars. And so I think that whole like order from chaos is a kind of inherent thing in the universe. Like it, ha it, it happens with like technology platforms. Say the internet was kind of this like chaotic open landscape and now it's become very ordered. It seems to be like an inherent nature uh, like evolution uh, from even from like physics level to like biology level to like technology. Where you start with a platform that's like chaotic and then it creates order and then creates new. And this is why I really love platforms like Ethereum because they're essentially taking the, the ordered structured internet that we have now like Facebook and Google and all those board gardens and it's creating, bringing it back to a new like chaotic platform. And uh, back to the Big Bang, um, if you go, up, go look up uh, Lawrence Krauss, he has this awesome talk on something from nothing. Um, and basically shows that you, know, you have to have something come from nothing. Okay, then this brings me on to some talks, the topics I'm really interested in, like uh, fractals and the simulation theory. Let's talk about that. So fractals are insane, they're like repeating patterns and they're everywhere in the universe, from spiral galaxies, galaxies to trees to like, um, you know, rivers and mountains, like they're everywhere. And they were only mathematically defined fairly recently, um, maybe like a few decades ago by uh, Benoit Mandelbrot. Uh, so he invented like the Mandelbrot set, you've probably seen it. So Z equals Z squared plus C is all it is. And so what's amazing here is that with such a simple equation like Z equals Z squared plus C, if you just keep looping that back in, looping the result back into the Z, you get infinite complexity. And I'm sure you've seen all the visualizations. Another pretty common visualization is trees. So like, you know, they have a trunk and they split, and then those split, and then those split, and those split, and those split, until you get this massive complexity from a very simple system just splitting. And so that raises a very kind of, <laughs> kind of out there thought that this idea that uh, perhaps the universe is just a fractal equation, but perhaps the initial starting equation is very small and very simple. We see the universe as very like almost infinitely complex with all these life forms and just like the vastness of it and everything, but it's only because it's been through so many iterations of that equation and we're just at the end point. But then that sparks the idea of the simulation theory. Um, I mean, if you can actually create a complex universe like, like ours from a very simple equation, then you can simulate it on a computer quite easily. So yeah. And if you go look up simulation theory, uh, there's a lot of great articles and talks out there, um, but basically everyone comes to the conclusion that probabilistically, mathematically, we are in a simulation. Again, next thought, uh, self-organizing systems and bottom-up kind of evolution uh, and super collective intelligence. Let's discuss that. Okay, so ant colonies are really fascinating. They build incredibly complex structures. Um, even like some of them have like air conditioning ducts to like vent the air. Um, some of them like farm um, and they have some amazing social and that's really the perfect example of like self-organizing systems that a human can actually understand because they can look at it from the top and see exactly what's happening. But see, if you took an individual ant and asked them like, hey, what have you built? They would have no fucking clue. And even if they elected like a little ant government and uh, created coordinated projects and had a tax system and all this crap, they might get some isolated pockets of little complexity and projects, but nowhere near the vastness of what they're currently doing. So I think that same concept applies to humans in many regards. So like our global economy, the internet, it's a self-organizing system for the most part. Um, no one individual can understand how it all works. Even that thought, uh, thought experiment of like taking a pencil and saying, well, how do you make this from scratch? No one individual knows how to make a pencil from scratch. It's a collective emergent system that we have. It's this idea I often mention where humans are kind of like a, a single global brain, where each of us are neurons in that brain. And you know, through the internet, and once we start getting implants, it's going to be more and more so where we create a collective AI. But see, then we run into the same issue that that single ant does. If we take a single human out and say, hey, look, you've made AI, they'd be like, what, what are you talking about? Like, they would have absolutely no idea. They couldn't comprehend it. And this is why building technology platforms that just have very simple rules at the beginning, but uh, you, you know, allow anyone to build stuff on top of is truly powerful because you create an emergent phenomena that you wouldn't expect. Probably how we should all be thinking. I mean, I love how the Ethereum developers, whenever they're asked, like, what's it going to be used for? They're like, they, they throw out some ideas, but then they say, well, there's going to be thousands of other use cases we have no idea that would be made yet. I guess it's about like just being okay with the idea that humans aren't very intelligent individually or in small groups, um, but on a huge, massive collective, we can actually create emergent phenomena. 
So uh, there you go, some random thoughts on chaos theory, complexity, um, simulation theory, and fractals, and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Let us know your thoughts. Hopefully there's something interesting in there. Snap in your own thoughts.